to everyone, it's a great pleasure to, to have you here um, at the end of this year, 2019. A very exciting year, uh, very exciting year, and I would, uh, if you have to give it a title, I would say, uh, I don't know, the year of women. The year of women because of the Women's World Cup and everything that this Women's World Cup meant for uh, women's football, but also um, more generally for all the discussions about uh, uh, equality and, uh, uh, and discrimination and the role of women in society and so on and so forth. Uh, but without overdoing it there, focusing on the Women's World Cup, incredible experience, incredible figures, full stadiums. In France, uh, 1.2 billion viewers um, worldwide. This is unprecedented and, and by far this projects the Women's World Cup uh, immediately after the Men's World Cup uh, as, I mean, the biggest uh, sporting event, one single sport, of course, uh, men and women combined. Uh, and this is, this is, I think, very, very important. We have seen some great matches, we have seen some great spectacles, uh, including, uh, when we speak about viewing figures, in countries which are normally uh, not really focusing on women's football, uh, such as Italy or, or I don't know, or Brazil, where the women's national team had uh, higher audience figures in England as well uh, than the men's national team. I mean, this was this was incredible, and this triggered, uh, of course, uh, a lot of proposals uh, when it comes to women's football. Before coming to this proposal, let me mention one more thing. Speaking about women, um, Iran. And uh, for the first time, as you know, in an official match, women were allowed to uh, access football stadium in, in Tehran. A milestone, an important step after a lot, of, uh, a lot of discussions. More to do, more to come, but we are there. Speaking, of course, about uh, women, uh, this year has also meant some reforms or some changes. I proposed five at the press conference in uh, Lyon before the final. Uh, increase of teams for the Women's World Cup from 24 to 32. This has already been decided. Increase of investment by FIFA in the next four years. One billion US dollars will be invested in development of women's football. This has been decided as well already, so it's on track. Uh, creation of a Club World Cup, we are here in Doha for a Club World Cup for the men, but the Club World Cup for women as well. This is work in progress. Creation of uh, a Nations League at worldwide level. I proposed this already more than two years ago. Uh, we are still discussing about that. And um, ultimately, uh, we have to reduce, of course, the gap with the men's game in terms of prize money. So at least doubling, but let's see what we can do more in in terms of uh, the negotiations of the rights, which will, will start for the 2023 World Cup as well, for which a bidding process is currently um, ongoing. These were my five proposals. The French FA president who was sitting next to me at that press conference made a new proposal as well that was not really picked up so much, but maybe actually his proposal is better than my five proposals jointly. He said that we should organize uh, uh, the Women's World Cup every two years instead of every four years because it has uh, such a big impact, a big positive impact for the development of uh, the women's game. This is certainly something that we need to consider and we are considering as well. So a lot uh, of exciting points with regard to women's football also in the next year and in the next years. When it comes to men, football, professional game, uh, well, the decision to create a new Club World Cup with 24 teams as of 2021. Transfer system reforms, uh, this may be not so exciting, but very, very, very important. Uh, and we are working on that with regard to agents, with regard to training compensation, more generally, the whole transfer system. I mean, 7 billion a year which are circulating without clear rules. We need to have clear rules. I was speaking to the President of the European Parliament about it as well recently. Um, transparency, good governance, FIFA as an institution. We concluded agreements with uh, plenty of organizations, the World Health Organization, uh, UNESCO, 
the African Union, the ASEAN countries, uh, the World Food Programme, this positions FIFA at, again, I would say, or maybe for the first time actually, uh, at the very top in terms of institutional relations and says that people are trusting in FIFA. And this is for me very important. Speaking about transparency as well, publication for the first time of uh, all judicial uh, bodies' decisions. Um, we are doing that, others are not, or not anymore doing that. And I think it's also an important step towards uh, good governance and, um, and transparency. In the social area as well, new foundation, football for schools, uh, safeguarding of children, so a lot of areas in which we have made some uh, important progress, not only on the pitch, but also outside of the pitch, so a very, very interesting year indeed.